The scenario I'm going to demonstrate today will take us from a blank page through to a deployed database. Let me start by creating a new model. As you can see, we're given the choice of creating a standalone, logical only, or physical only model, or a combined logical physical model. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'll choose the combined model option. We also have the option to use a template to kickstart our modeling. I'm using a template I prepared earlier with SQL Server 2008 as the target DBMS. This template incorporates some standards so that it saves me having to worry about whether my model will conform to those standards and allows me to concentrate on the modeling. The first thing you'll notice about this template is that I have pre-configured four different diagrams that correspond to stages in the development of my model. Using the conceptual diagram, I will first of all place a few entities on the drawing pane. I can name these entities by simply selecting the entity and typing. Next, I draw the relationships. OK, so now we have a basic conceptual level entity relationship diagram. The first step to turning this diagram into a model is to define the concepts we've included. I have a diagram for this allowing me to add the entity definitions directly into the drawing pane. Now we'll move on to the logical level diagram where we can see that the entity box is expanded and divided into two sections. The top section will contain primary key attributes while the bottom will contain non-key attributes. Again we can simply type directly into the diagram. But in this case I want to show you another aspect of the template I'm using. Over here in the Model Explorer, I've already defined a set of domains which will act as templates for my attributes. Domains can specify any or all properties of an attribute. All I have to do is drag the domain I want into its place on the diagram to create an attribute inheriting all of the predefined properties of the domain. As you can see, this is a powerful feature for standardization and reuse, both within and across models. We can examine the attribute properties using the Attribute Editor. All modeling objects in Erwin have a, an editor following this basic pattern, 
A list of objects is presented at the top of the editor with a set of tabbed property sheets below. You'll see that the attributes have all the properties you'd expect already defined. Let's assume then that this concludes the logical modelling for now and move on to the physical model diagram. Here I've chosen to show the actual order of columns as they will appear in the database so the table box isn't divided in the same way that the entity box was in the logical view. You'll notice straight away that the names in this view are very different from those in the logical view. Table names are all prefixed with a T and column names are only qualified with the table name where necessary for disambiguation. Again all of this is done in the template. If we take a look at the model naming options you'll see how this translation has been achieved. In particular, this long string of macro code decides when a column name needs disambiguation. And here it's clear where the table prefix has come from. Taking a look at the table editor, we can see that it takes a similar form to the attribute editor we saw before. This is where we would specify physical options such as storage and partitioning. But the only thing I want to do for now is to add the schema for the tables. All that remains now is to generate the database. Schema generation presents us with what looks like a bewildering set of options. But luckily our template has made all the decisions for us. So all we need to do is select our predefined option set and preview the DDL. Click on Generate. Connect to the database server. The script runs and we have a database. That concludes this demonstration. Thank you.